Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Zara and today I am going to be doing a review of a really great standalone that I read recently called 36th Street by T.R. Napper. Now this is a book that was recommended to me by a friend of mine, shout out to Matt. Matt and I have really similar tastes so when he put this one on my radar I've had it on my wish list for a while and I've just been waiting for the right moment to pick it up. And a couple of weeks back, I was craving something a little bit different, something quite fast paced. And I looked at this book again. I thought, you know what, let's finally give this book a go. So I bought it. I read it in a couple of days and I want to tell you about it because I think a lot of you will really enjoy it. Now, let's go into what this book is about. Now, firstly, this book is an urban fantasy set in a fantasy version of Vietnam. We are based in Hanoi and there is an area in Hanoi called the 36th Street. It's a very densely packed part of Hanoi. There's lots of stalls, very narrow streets, little alleyways. It actually reminds me of a lot of European cities in a way where, you know, you have the really kind of tight little roads and you have the little pathways and everybody's kind of squashed together and that area called the 36 streets is essentially ruled by a bunch of different gangs the story centers on our main character lynn who has created a bit of a reputation for herself she is working under the guidance of a gang leader who goes by the name of bao en guin now there is an interesting aspect of this book where the people of the city are being held captive by a simulation video game that goes by the name of Fat Victory. And this essentially simulates what happened between the US and Vietnam in the US-Vietnam War. And one of the creators of that game comes to Hanoi to find one of his friends who ended up getting murdered. And he comes to Bao and Gwyn and Lin for help. So it is a kind of murder mystery. There is a very strong kind of thriller aspect to it. And that's what really kicks off the start of this book. From what I understand, this book is just a standalone. I don't know if the author has plans to write other books in the same world or to continue on the stories, but I would say it's pretty complete. I do think he could take it elsewhere, but the core arc of this story is definitely complete. So without further ado, let's jump into what I liked about it. Now, the first thing I'm going to say before I jump into any specifics is that this is what J City should have been like. This gave me everything that I would have expected from a book that is as hyped as Jade City. And I'm going to tell you why. Now, firstly, the writing is really solid. The narrative was super easy to get through, super easy to read. The book didn't take me long to read. It was very well paced and we had a good amount of twists and turns. Everything had a place, everything fit the place in which it was in. And even though it's a very action packed book, there are still quiet moments between the characters and with the main character herself to balance out these really intense moments. So the events that are sequenced throughout the book are sequenced really well. It doesn't feel disjointed. It feels like a collective narrative. The second thing that really added to this is the world building. Now, one of the things that I hated about Jade City and the Green Brain Saga in general was that even though it's based on a fictionalized version of a bunch of different East Asian cities, it didn't feel like it. It really lacked the imagery of what one would expect in a urban fantasy version of, you know, Hong Kong or Shanghai or Tokyo or any other East Asian city, right? It just did not feel distinct. Whereas in this one, Hanoi feels like a character in itself. It's grimy, it's dirty, there's a lot happening. You can feel the sense of claustrophobia in this very busy, very happening place. And it's not surprising to me that the author spent a bunch of time in Vietnam because you can tell that he's really captured it and he's really taken the time to carve out Hanoi as this really intriguing place especially for somebody who has never been there. The next thing that I really like is the thematic work. Now you'll notice that I haven't talked about characters yet and I'll come on to characters in a second. Don't worry, I haven't missed them out. But there are certain things that I was very neutral about in regards to this book and characters is one of those things. So I will come on to that towards the end. But the thematic work was really interesting. Now, one of the really cool things about our main character, Lynn, is that she is mixed race. She is half Australian and half Vietnamese. And so there is this constant sense that she is grappling with this with her identity and trying to figure out who she is is she australian is she vietnamese is she somewhere in the middle what does that actually mean for her 
as she lives her daily life? What does it mean to grapple with one's own cultural identity? especially when you don't really feel like you belong to either. I thought that was really interesting and it's something that, that I definitely personally very much identify with. The other thematic work that I thought was really compelling was questions around like memory. So there's a lot of sci-fi, cyberpunky elements to this book that I should have mentioned right at the start. I don't typically enjoy cyberpunk because I just think it's done really badly in general, but the cyberpunk elements in this book worked really, really, really well. And one of the things is that the, the characters have like augmented memories as well. And so there is this kind of backdrop of what is memory and what happens when you alter someone's memory. Like, does that make a new memory? Is that ever really an original memory? Like all of these different questions that I thought was quite cool. And then the other aspect of that was the, I mentioned the video game aspect of it and the kind of simulation of, of war and I think there are some very pertinent questions around the power of video games and simulations and how they can impact our humanity if not used carefully and if not regulated. Simulation is a very powerful tool often used in the military and I actually have experience of this at my first company because we were a, a company that employed simulation to help certain organisations to create very realistic experiences to kind of mimic the conditions essentially uh, to test people and, and how they would react in those situations so I'm, I'm very aware of that topic and it's something that i thought about a lot especially when i was at my first company so it brought up some really interesting questions again now onto the things that were i wouldn't say bad i would just say i was very neutral on and there was one key aspect of that and that was the characters i think for me the real strength of this book is everything that's happening outside of the characters again that's not to say that the characters are bad it's just that they weren't my favourite part of the book. I think the world building and the thematic work was far more interesting. I think the characters are really just vehicles in which the story is told. Naturally, that's what characters are there for. But they were okay. Like, they were okay. I'm going to talk about our main character, Lynn. The thing that I found very jarring about Lynn is that I really enjoyed her POV at the start. We only follow her perspective. And I, I really enjoyed it at the start. She's a very ignorant person and I actually like reading that and I like reading to see how a character grows from an ignorant person to somebody who's much more accepting and much more open to different experiences and different types of people. But we never really get that with Lynn. She's very judgmental and she never changes, like she stays judgmental. And I don't really understand why, especially because she's mixed race and she's had a lot of people judging her. I would have expected somebody like her to become very cognizant of her own lack of awareness, maybe. And I don't know how else to frame it, but her own lack of awareness and in fact, turn that on its head and be somebody who's very accepting of other people. I think, you know, she's very confused about her identity and I just would have expected somebody to be so confused about their own identity to be very forthcoming with other people as well and be very accepting. And I just didn't get that at all. And I do think, to be fair to Napa, that is quite a realistic portrayal of somebody who's grappling with that. You know, there's that saying, the bullied becomes the bully. I feel like you could kind of emulate that to some extent in this case, you know, the ignorant... The, the one who has been judged is now being the judge. And uh, I just don't know if I personally like that choice that the author made. I just would have liked to have seen her open up her world a little bit by the end of the book. And I just don't really feel like we got that. I think what would have been interesting is if this had been like a duology. Again, I don't know if that's the author's intent to keep it a standalone, but I think it would have been really good as a duology where we could have really got to know Lynn because I th I felt like a lot of her insights were quite surface level and I was just waiting for that layer deeper and we never really got it. So that was kind of one of my gripes. There is this cast of secondary characters as well and my favourite one was definitely Bao and Gwyn. I actually would have really liked a book about him and about his kind of rise to power. I also do really like the wise teacher trope helping the student i just love that trope and i just would have liked more time with him we just didn't get enough time with him to be honest the other characters were fine like i don't feel like many of them were that distinct uh, i think you know i'm pretty neutral on them i don't think there were any bad characters per se i just feel like we were missing a layer and i think another book could have helped pad that out a little bit 
I gave this book a four stars. I really enjoyed it. I had a really fun time with it. I think if you're looking for a standalone, which is really fast paced, has a really compelling world, has some really interesting thematic questions and has decent characters, then this is the book for you. We all read long series, big chunky fantasy books, and sometimes we just want something that we can get through. It's only about 350 pages. It's a no-brainer for me. I know a lot of you who watch my channel, who like Grimdark and darker fantasy, you like action, you like adventure, you'll really love this book. A lot of you who like Jade City, I think would really love this book. The only thing I will say is that it is quite dark. I wouldn't say it's super dark. Like I think it's more on the vanilla side of dark. Like if I had to rank the darkness from one to 10, 10 being extremely dark and one being like very, very light on the dark side, I would say it's probably like a three. So I think even if you're somebody who doesn't like Grimdark, you would really like this book. But even if you are somebody who likes Grimdark, I think you will also really like this book. So I think it has pretty wide appeal. So if you are looking for a short, fast paced read, this is definitely the one for you. I haven't seen anybody talk about this book. So if you have read this book, let me know down below because I'd love to talk about it with you. And if you haven't and you have any questions, also let me know because I'm happy to answer them. Thanks for watching, Rogues. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Thank you.